So I'm cooking some noodles. Just in hot water, leave it rest. I like to use bamboo equipment. Occasionally you have to turn the noodles because the bottom gets wet because there's quite a lot of water in the bottom, see? You can see that. So you push it to one side and just flip the stuff over. Otherwise the bottom noodles will get soggy and the top's not quite cooked. So we just leave them there as long as they like. So you've finished the rest of the cooking. Now what I've got here is some onion, chunky onion, I like my onion chunky. And cabbage, sliced. Not shredded off of the cabbage ball. I peel the leaves because if you cut into the cabbage and put it back in the fridge you lose all the vitamin C apparently within a couple of hours. Ginger, garlic. Now I like to, uh, this is how I do my garlic, down the side, down to the tip and it pops off nice and easy into the bin. Now any brain bits like that, be very careful with knives. Always work away from yourself. Use your thumb and lever the knife. Don't be pulling your arm because it will slip and get your finger. So you put the knife there, you get your thumb on the edge and then you just press lever the knife against your thumb. That will prevent you loads of cuts and accidents. Always put the knife down if you're doing anything. Don't ever do this with a knife in your hand. Especially not that kind of business. Right, it's the last bit of ginger I've got. Easiest way to get rid of the dry bit on the ends, it's a bit dry, chop it in half, lay it on its side, and you can just slice the dry bit off if you feel the need, and you're not wasting anything. So I like to use the speed peeler. Can be helpful just to do the edge. Now lift up as you do it, otherwise you'll, depending on how old your peeler is, mine's quite old, so now look at the width between there, that was much thinner. You can sort of see where I've lost a lot of that metal. I guess I must have eaten it. And again, be careful with that because I took the tip of my little finger off once. Bramley apples, the brown parts of Bramley apples, it got stuck and I went Tsh! and I just took the tip off. It was hanging off, just one little red dot of blood. So I pressed it back on and I pressed it against my tongue. Like so, um, for six minutes I sat down, suspended my cooking. And I pressed it on for six minutes, you couldn't even see it and it stuck straight back down and I had no problems with it. For about a week. Eventually the dried part of the skin as it grew had this little flaky bit came off in the end. But if it's only a thin bit you can stick your skin back down. But again I did have to sit a whole six minutes pressing it against my tongue. So always keep your fingers out of the way. This is a little bit small for me. I like a larger bit really. But... And these speed peelers are really good and of course they work with a slicing action, so you do have to move the nut. Don't just draw the thing. You slice a bit like that. And that'll save you lots of messing around. And then, let's do that a bit quicker. And then what I like to do with my ginger crush it pretty much like I do my garlic. So I always take the stem out and I just put the knife across the center of the stem once you've taken the back off. Put the knife in. Now the tip onto the board and move it down like that. Now you see you can pop out the stems, which are a bit sour and apparently a bit poisonous or something, someone told me. Now then I take this, the garlic, rounded side, and the blunt, the sharp edge of the blunt part of the knife. Oh, there's the other bit of thing. Now again with the tip on the board, and you just do this. And I go round the curve of the garlic, oh, until it gets quite thin, 
you hold it with your fingernail like that and then I go onto the edge where they last a little bit and just chop up the edge. For some reason I like to do the flat side with the cut part pointing to me. So you can mash it up there, get the last bit along the edge, squeeze it in there. And I gather that you can wipe the garlic off like that and then I chop across my garlic. Like so, in varying directions. Again, with the tip on the board. It's nice and quiet as well for your neighbours and relatives who may be sat nearby trying to listen to the radio or what have you. Now you can keep chopping and chopping and chopping and your garlic will eventually turn completely sort of transparent. If you're a bit impatient, you can just crush it a bit more. I'll use the edge to remove the chunkier bits which always end up on the knife to begin with. If you don't go all the way through to the board, they tend not to stick on the side so much. And you can whittle them down like so. Now, what well, like I say, so I do the same thing with my ginger. Doesn't matter which way around, it's a bit tough, so you've got to have a bit of strength for that. You can see the fibres there. Well, I can anyway. It's got uh, ginger fibres. Uh, no jokes, please. And you have prepared, let's go sideways with the fibre rather than against it, it's a little bit easier. If you go with the fibre, you get a nice, okay. Pattern like that, and do the same as the garlic. Alternatively, you can use one of these. They're a bit difficult to clean, you'll need like a skewer. I've got a very thin skewer that I use. So I keep always this side of my right if I have pieces stuck in the holes that need cleaning afterwards. And there you have your garlic and your ginger ready to go. Stir fry, I like to cook, cut my courgette into cube, well, rectangles really. So I go down them like so, and then like that. It's nice to have them fairly thick, but I haven't got much here, so I want a few pieces to be scattered around my meal. Pepper. Chunky as you like. I cut the tip off like that really, and sometimes I do the end like. Now, if you want a thin, thinner pepper, doesn't matter how big your piece of pepper is, you can just cut at angles. One, two, three. I do my chicken like this for stir fry as well, and you get a nice variation. So you've got a thick end and a nice thin end. And then when it gets to a certain thickness, you can just chop up like this, varying it again. And do the same with the end. If you don't want, I don't want a huge chunky pepper in my thing. I like chunky onion. Now mushrooms, always get rid of the stalk. There's apparently hardly any nutritional value in a mushroom. And the stalk contains all of the pesticides and fertilizers. So you can remove the stalk if you want. I don't bother usually, but Press it backwards like this, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and it'll pop out. Now I like to cut the mushrooms chunky, so I go round it in a wheel style, which is a bit tricky. Because you tend to loop, there you go, then it's gripped on the knife, so I've got to push it back into position. And that'll do. Now all of these pieces will cook pretty much in the same time. Let's turn my noodles over. See, they're looking lovely. And there'll be a nice bit of juice in there at the bottom, which, you, which is very handy for 
near the end of the cooking time. Now it's always good to keep a lid, you see there, look at all that moisture, it's lovely. Mm. Look at all that lovely moisture, keep all that moisture in. Now I'm going to turn the pan back up a bit, get rid of that. Sometimes I'll put sweet potato in but don't fancy it today because I'm having halloumi. A nice bit of halloumi goes really nicely. Tesco halloumi. That's how you spell it. It's always good to keep various pots and things. Lincolnshire pork cocktail sausages. I don't even know where I got that because I don't buy that kind of thing. Now I like to, when the heat's up a bit, I like to use mushroom ketchup. Soy of any variety, but I've just kept this Kickerman bottle. Oh, balsamic. This is quite a nice one, Modena. It's not too strong, so you can use quite a lot. And to add to my liquids, I just shake quite a bit on straight onto the onion and cabbage. Now that's quite a lot for a strong. Balsamic, but that went well. Now that's all I need for that. I always dab a bit of soy straight in. Uh, but usually I save the juice, save the mushroom ketchup when things have cooked a fair bit. Let's press this cabbage down onto the surface. That's what I usually do with my carrots if I slice my carrot. I'll, I'll slice it into sort of fairly, say, a carrot that long, into thirds. Stand it up on its end, each cut section, half it, lie the half ends flat and then just chop along the length of those sections that you've cut and you get a nice thin bit of carrot. Again, use the tip, go place your knife where you want it, then reach for the board and then slice. It will stick to the side. If you don't want it sticking to the side, you have to draw the knife with the tip and then wiggle at the end. It's quite a tricky technique to Avoid getting all the cabbage, sorry, the carrot or other items that you can chop will pile up against the edge of the knife and you'll find yourself trying to rub it off, which you can end up cutting yourself doing that. Mushrooms cook the quickest and do have a lot of moisture in them. So I'm going to put them in at the end. You want to cut all your veg, so basically by trial and error you'll get the experience of how thick to cut the veg so that it all cooks at about the same time. Unless you like crunchy veg. All you need to do is heat the stuff up really. Oh, I must remember to put the lid back on the noodles. So we'll next add this veg which only leaves the halloumi And the mushrooms. Now, uh, Lumi's got water in the in the package. You could put the water in there. Cheese water, Gwyneth. Where's fetch me my cheese water, Gwyneth? No, it's an old comedy sketch that uh, people with longer memories will remember, but. Oh yeah, might as well put that in there. Now, that's a, ooh, it's quite a healthy sized piece of halloumi. Slightly too much, maybe, for one. But I do enjoy it. There's usually a split. You'll find that's quite common. It must be how it's manufactured and folded. Uh, so I cut it fairly thin. And what we want is cubes. You don't have to cut much of that side, but um, I might just half there, half there, four ways, and then we just, similar to how I cut the carrot. Now that can all go in. I'll place it into the centre of the pan, it's a bit hotter. Quite a nice noise that, isn't it? Only the first time there. But, um, so, what I like to do is press the veg that's just been 
added onto the pan base and that speeds up the cooking. There's no point turning it all over. You might as well just selectively cook each thing as you see fit. Just press it down onto the pan. Especially important with the carrots because that does take a bit longer than most other things. And now my mouth is watering. Back on with the lid. In a moment I'll clear a little space in the middle of that pan um, and put the garlic and ginger in onto the hot spot in the middle. This old iron skillet has been heated beyond uh, practical use and then put under the cold tap. And what that does is super cool one side of the metal before the other so you end up with a buckled pan. And so now you'll see I've actually got two or three different surfaces here. So what I tend to do at this point is get the other sides of the pan warming on the hob. Of course you don't have to do that if you've got gas. Now we're almost done. Let's turn the old noodles again a bit. Where's my friend the fly? He usually comes over and has a little visit for me, but it's actually a bit late in the minute, so he's probably resting in the back of the amplifier where it's warm. Or sometimes he visits me when I'm on the laptop. Now, obviously, always tidy up as you go. Saves all the horrible job at the end. I might use a little bit of this today as well. So I don't often use, and of course, KN and black pepper. Oh, look at all that lovely water. Now that's cooking up nicely because I've turned it up to two and a, ooh, just two and a quarter. That is, it's a little bit too hot, so I'll turn it down to two. Blow the steam out of the way while you're doing your pepper, else you get gunk up the bottom of the mechanism. which all the uh, housemates of mine used to do to my salt and pepper grinders when I had, had to live in shared houses when I was more youthful. A little bit of salt, don't really need it. Uh, I think I'll put some Chinese five spice that my dad gave me. Now be careful with this stuff. You've got to use it like KN really. Well, a little bit, you can put a little bit more, but that's getting to be a bit too much now. It's quite a strong aroma. It's a stronger aroma than it is a flavour. I'll add a tiny bit more. Go on. It smells a lot more than it does taste in the final product. Now, I don't bother with bay leaves or cardamom or anything really. Now, this is a lovely product. Smoked paprika. Now look at that, see paprika is no way near as hot as KN, so you can use quite a lot, but the smoked element of it is quite strong. That shall do, pop that back. I haven't put any KN yet in, I don't think. So here we go for the KN. Oh, that'd be quite hot. I like stuff quite hard. Now it's time. Ah. See the moisture at the edge can be swept in to loosen. Let's take the heat off a bit. Loosen the halloumi, which sticks. It does fry quite brown. It browns very nicely, halloumi does. Now that's all loosened straight off of the pan. You don't want to mush it all up. Do that too quickly, it mushes up. Same thing with baked beans. If they've all stuck to the bottom, just let them cool down for a, a minute or two. And then gently stir from the edge and your beans will not end up a big mushy pile. Now you see that's drying off quite a bit, so I like to add a bit more soy. There we go. 
how lovely stuff. In fact, sometimes I like to have a little taste of it raw. Now, oh, before we do that, mmm, lovely smell on that soy. This is actually the soy sauce I'm using. Mail Yin soy. £2.79. It's a bit cheaper than Kickerman. Let's get these mushrooms around the edge because they will loose a bit of water into there as well. Now that's quite dry isn't it? So, but what we're going to do is sweep up, there you go, plop, plop that in. Use the back of the bamboo spatula. Best to use bamboo. Has antibacterial properties, my dad was telling me today. They are actually making t-shirts and things of it where cotton and polyesters um, harbour bacteria. And you can now buy all kinds of things made of bamboo. In fact, my friend, he told my, he, my dad told me a friend of his made a bamboo bicycle lashed together. Amazing! It's a real work of art, he said. I'd like to see. It. I'd like to have one myself. That's mushroom ketchup. It's a little bit like Worcester, but without the fish. It's perfectly vegan. Suitable for vegetarians and vegans. There you go. There's no ingredients, as in with Worcester sauce, because it's probably a bit of a trade secret. But anyway, it does have a little mushroomy flavour to it, and it's a lot like um, balsamic crossed with Worcester, with a bit of mushroom. Well, let's put more soy, because it's not too strong. I always add some at the end after my after I've served it. Now I do fancy a bit of this. Now this is quite strong, so you've got to be careful with this. You only want a few drops per kind of handful. Mm. It's really nice with chicken. So I can pop the lid back on, bring the veg from the edge, just to crowd the garlic and let the garlic cook in the juice for a bit. And the juices. And we should allow the steam to build up. That lives there. And these can go, I keep these, all these three in the fridge. I suppose one last turn of the noodles, push it down, scoop it over and pull the bottom across over the top, you see, and then push the top back. So you've totally reversed, and that's how to upend your noodles. You just heat the pan, put the dry stack of noodles in. There was a Come like that, see? Stick that in the pan. I pour the hot water over there, about a co coffee cup's worth. So in a pan that size, there's about so much water in the bottom. And that does leave a bit after, and... There we are. I can turn that down a tad. And I'm almost ready to eat. Now what I like to do is we all probably do, eat out of the bowl, and a warm plate, a warm bowl, I like a warm bowl. And um, if I'm cooking pasta or something, I can heat a plate on the pan of pasta, or use the pasta water, is what I often do. Tip a bit of the water onto the plate, drain it after a while, and the heat of the plate will dry your plate, so you don't have to worry about having a wet plate if you use water. So I'm gonna boil the kettle a, a wee tad, Ooh, look at all that juice. And then I'm going to use 
hot water to just to warm my plate. That's the kettle boiled enough. We don't need it too hot. We save electricity and global warming, isn't it? I always try to reach the kettle before it clicks off. Now, final stage, I like to turn it up a tad. Don't forget you have water in there and suddenly move the bowl. I've done that enough times. So be careful you have, and remember you have water in there. You could always leave a, an item on the bowl to remind you. I won't need that because I'm just having noodles. I'm not using that. So you can go back in the cupboard. And then I shall just eat with a fork. So that's getting nice and hot now. See that moisture developing. You can also tell that the noodles, a bit like with rice, when there's excess water, it gathers on the lid with rice. If there is no water on the lid, you will probably need to add a bit, a bit more um, when cooking basmati rice because you only use the accurate, uh, the exact amount of water that required for the amount of rice you're cooking. And don't really, you never want the rice to be more than um, a few, a couple of inches thick at most. So if you're cooking for a lot of people, you will need big wide pans, a bit like paella pan, say for huge amounts of people, uh, or multiple pans. If you haven't got multiple pans, do multiple servings. Rice doesn't need, really need to be hot. And you can always just uh, heat it in the microwave a tad. Now I can turn the heat off now. Always remember the wall. Have I turned my... Oh, I've left my... Oh, turned the kettle off. I've left my toaster plugged in and turned on. So always turn that off. Apparently it's about £30 a year just to have your toaster plugged in and turned on. So I've just saved myself £60 by doing that every day. Now then, look at that, lovely. Now all that moisture is just from the veg. Just a little puddle of it. And uh, we don't really want to lose that moisture. It, I don't know if it holds any minerals or anything special because it is just vapour. So you can see the garlic now in the middle. It hasn't stuck to the bottom because we've only got the heat on two. Now, that garlic's nice and cooked, we can then, this is the only bit where I stir. It's the only bit you need to stir. And the cabbage should be fairly soft, because it does take a while to cook. And... You just add the noodles, and any juice that's left. The juice will also help the odd little bit of noodles to come out of the pan. Although they never completely do. Get in there then, today. There we go. More empty pan. Let's use a tiny tad of pot, because there's a bit of residue in there. And you get all that lovely starchy water and clean the pan. And it saves the drains from getting so greasy, doesn't it? You don't put all that stuff down the drain. And turn the heat back up, I think, to blast it a bit more now that that's in there. my pan that's all the washing up I need doing just a quick rinse in the cold there and your pan's pretty much clean if you don't like the residue around the edge you can give it a quick wipe but not entirely necessary so I can return the lid to my lid spot ah I've forgotten I'll turn that off 